Good morning. The look I'm rocking today is called Exhausted Mum Chic. Yeah. I'm sure you know it. I'm sure you've been there. My littlest one, Gino, she's three. She was three yesterday. Very exciting day for her. Every day for the last six months, she's woken up and said, is it my birthday today, Mum? So she was very excited, but she got a little bit sick. Maybe too much excitement. So last night, she was awake for several hours in the middle of the night. So let's just say today is going to be a three coffee day for sure. The night was made a little bit better by the fact that we sleep together in the same bed. So instead of having to get up and soothe her all night, I was able to just tuck her into the nook of my arm and give her a little bit of love and more breast milk and things like that all night and I do sometimes think if we were sleeping in different beds or even different parts of the house how much harder that would be. Now we are big fans of co-sleeping so even my older daughter Ramona, she's five and the four of us just sleep in a massive bed, the biggest bed you've ever seen with a million pillows and we all just tumble in there every night and sleep together and we've done that for five years since the day that we brought my daughter Ramona home from hospital. Now I never thought I would co-sleep. In fact we used to look after my nephews and they would sleep in our bed with them and I'd wake up every morning and I'd be like my kids are never gonna sleep in my bed because they would kick me all night long and then basically my daughter was born and I was like there's no way she's gonna sleep in another room and I started reading about attachment parenting and the results of um, keeping your children close and things like that. I read about how when you leave your children to cry it out or do even controlled crying, their systems are flooded with the stress hormone cortisol and the effects of cortisol on the brain are so long term and can be really quite damaging. And I decided there and then that I would parent in the way that caused the least production of cortisol for my children. So that does mean not leaving them to cry. I think in a way, co-sleeping can impact the quality of your sleep because you are aware of other people being in your bed obviously but sometimes that's quite positive like you can respond to them immediately when they're having a nightmare which is really cool just simply by giving them a little pat or something and I really love hearing them giggle in the middle of the night as they're having a really pleasant dream. Last night at one point I was sort of dozing in and out of sleep as Juno was just sniffling around being a little bit miserable and at one point I became aware of her just putting her fingers over my nose like this and her murmuring, the mummy wolf is climbing up the mountain, the baby wolf is climbing down the mountain. <laughs> I think the hardest thing about co-sleeping and um, you know helping your children really hands-on get to sleep at night so they don't have to cry, I think the, the hardest thing about that is the sort of emotional weariness that comes from battling convention because it's not very normal to, to do that and I think sometimes people can make you feel bad but once you discover that there's a whole world of people who are co-sleeping and you know parenting in this way I think that the hardship of that is eased a little bit and you start to feel like you're doing the right thing and that feels good. I think the day-to-day -day practicalities of co-sleeping and being there for your children as they drift off to sleep are actually quite pleasant and not really that hard or draining at all so sometimes the kids will just fall asleep on the sofa with me if we've got guests Gina you know, would just nurse off to sleep while we're chatting sometimes we go up there and read stories and me and Tim just conk out and the girls just drift off afterwards um, now Gina is three and she still requires a little bit more like breast milk and all that kind of thing but Ramona's five now and she just says I'm tired and then goes upstairs and Tim lies down with her and she's asleep in three seconds kind of thing so we are aware that um, as they grow, their need for you to be stroking their back and giving them breast milk definitely lessens and they just naturally become much more independent sleepers. There's really no need for us to push that on them before they're ready. Yeah, so my thoughts about co-sleeping and crying it out and sleeping independence and things is that our children need us as much at night time and at bedtime as they do during the day. And I'm pretty sure that when I'm an old granny, I'm not going to look back and regret the years that I spent stroking my children's heads as they drifted off to sleep. See you next time for some more Hippie Shake Malarkey and don't forget to subscribe.